Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are looking at 2022's external exam paper for Queensland, Australia. We are moving on to our complex familiar and complex unfamiliar questions from paper two, which are worth several marks. So these are the ones we really want to do well on. And we're looking at question two, which is an annuities question. Okay, so let's get straight into it. It's worth five marks, so good chunk of the paper. TAM deposits a fixed amount at the end of each month into an account paying 8.6% per annum compounding monthly. From an initial zero balance, she accumulates $51,343.85 in four years. A financial planner has advised that TAM um, that she would have at least $3,000 better off if she had instead deposited half of the fixed amount, so half of that um, amount that she's put in, which we don't know what that is, um, and deposited that at the end of each fortnight into an account paying 7.9% per annum compounding fortnightly. Evaluate the reasonableness of this advice. So basically what we've got is a situation here where Tams had some sort of an investment. She's putting money into the bank every month. She's got a decent interest rate of 8.6% per annum and there's this compounding monthly that's happening. But someone's told her you could have actually done better with a lower interest rate, which you might be thinking, well, how's that possible? But we compound more frequently so we need to work out is this financial planner um, know what they're talking about or are they giving Tam bad advice so firstly what kind of investment has Tam actually followed has she just been chucking money in the bank or has she got something special going on well we've got these regular equal payments we just don't know how much they are we've got an element of compounding that tells me that's an annuity regular payments of the same amount compounding is an annuity so let's before we can even work out what those um, outcomes were is the financial advisor better we need to work out how much Tam has been paying into the annuity and we need to pick a formula so we've got a choice here we've got the, the our formula sheet we've got this first one with the positive power second one with the negative power now remember positive power means you're adding to your investment Negative power means you're taking away from your investment. So we want the positive formula here from our formula sheet. So that's the one we're going to choose and select and work with. Okay, so now we're going to use this um, to work out our value M. What is this regular payment Tam has been paying into her bank account? So always a good place to start is stating your variables, often worth a mark. So let's do that. We've got our formula here. I've just rewritten that up there to make a bit of space. Okay, so firstly, our interest rate is going to be this 8.6. We need to change that from a percentage to a decimal. Do that on your calculator by dividing by 100. And then we're going to divide that by 12 because this is a PA means per annum per year. We need to work out the monthly rate. So we're going to divide that by 12. We're going to get an interest rate of 0 0.0072. Okay, that's our first part, our first variable. Our second variable is um, the amount that she's accumulated, the amount at the end. And that's the amount given to us in the question. And we know it's four years. So our value for N is going to be four years times 12 months in a year gives us 48. So now that we've stated our variables, um, we may have potentially earned a mark there, but as you can see, nothing's popped up on the screen. So that means the QCAA didn't award a mark for stating variables, but you just never know when they're going to. So it's always a good idea to do it. Now we're going to substitute into the formula and notice here it says correctly substitutes parameters, another word for that is variables, into the appropriate formula. So there's two elements here. They're wanting you to pick the right formula. You have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And they want you to put things in the right spot. So that means you had to actually work these bits out correctly. Now, if you look at the QCAA solution, they probably have not worked out these parts individually. They've probably put into the formula this part here, 0 0.086 divided by 12 and 4 times 12 up here. Um, that's okay to do it that way as well. It does get a bit messy and a bit confusing. That's why I like to state variables first and separately. Okay, that's our first mark. Now we're going to work this out a little bit further. So you can do everything over here on the right hand side. Keep it on your calculator though. And then take this information and divide both sides by the 57. And you're going to get a payment of $899.99999. You could round that correctly to $900 um, is her payment that she's putting in because we don't really work with 99 cents very much. And with all those repeating nines, it tells us we're going to round that to $900. So we've found her payment. That's our second mark. Okay, now we need to know what she could have achieved um, 
if she had done it differently now with according to the financial planner's advice we're going to take that nine hundred dollars instead of going in every month we're now going to do that fortnightly so we're going to now um, get this new payment um, because remember they've said she could deposit half of that half of 900 is 450 a fortnight and let's just put that back into the same formula this time Um, we're now going to use a different rate we're going to do 0.079 we get that from the 7.9 percent divided by 100 to make it into a decimal and this time we've got 26 fortnights so our interest rate is going to be different 0.003 good idea to leave that on your calculator because it may not be exactly that and our value for M is now 450. We've just worked that out. We've now got a total of not four by 26, which is 104 payments that she's paying in every year. Okay, so or over the four years. So now we're putting in that into our formula. Correct substitution again. Working that out, 450 times 122 gives us $54,941.61. We're not finished. Okay, we've worked out what she would have had if she'd followed financial planner's advice in the first place. But what's the difference between what she earned and what she got? Well, we've got that value there. We've got another mark for working that out. But now we need to do the evaluation of the reasonableness of advice. So the difference between those two amounts was actually $3,597.76. So the financial planner was correct. That is at least $3,000. So we've got that difference. We need to show the working there to get our next mark. And we need to write a statement at the end. This is the evaluation part. She would have been this much better off, which is at least $3,000. Hence, the advice is reasonable. And comparing the two values. So notice this is the actual QCAA's wording here for what they were looking for, a comparison of those two values. So it's not just enough to say advice is reasonable. You need to give a reason why. And that was the end of that question. Did you find that helpful? It was a lot to unpack in the beginning and knowing where to start, it's always a good idea to take the information that's useful, follow that C plan, do check problem solving process, underline and highlight the important information, write a form, pick a formula, put some variables into the formula and see where you go with it. Um, If you found it helpful, why not engage with us further here, like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications bell so you always know when the next video is available. You can tell us in the comments, you can follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram, or you could even send us an email if you've got any questions. We're at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day.